Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to this uh, Synergy workshop session. And uh, Synergy is uh, an activity which is run by under CET Rachana program. And we are organizing some workshops for teachers, students, and those who are working in education sector. This is a session uh, which we are organizing today. And in this uh, session, the speaker uh, is from CET, Dr. Gomati Jatin. And the speaker in this session focuses on practices that lead to school effectiveness and school improvement, highlighting the role of teachers in this process. The speaker has referred to the Stala Siddhi framework as an example to discuss about school improvement. Uh, the speaker lays emphasis on learning from experience and illustrates how the steps followed to this learning experience align with reflective practices of the individual involved in the learning. She put forth the idea of how such reflective practices provide opportunities for teachers to learn from their own experiences and rectify their mistakes to a conscious process of thinking and analysis. Further, the speaker eliminates the role and responsibilities of teachers towards the improvement of their school. The session seeks to actively engage participants with hands-on experience of practicing and reflecting to improve upon their practices as energy objectives aim that we discuss in this session on topic which is related to uh, school improvement and learning from experiences. So now I am uh, call upon Dr. Gomati Jatin to uh, discuss on the topic and uh, we request all of you to be engaged in this topic, in this subject actively. So Dr. Gomati Jatin. Thanks. Thank you, Vinay. Thank you for that introduction and good evening one and all here. So as you are aware that uh, today's session is on school improvement. Uh, first, I would like to know how many of you are school teachers here? Can you please raise your hands? Or prospective teachers? Prospective teachers in this sense, student teachers are also included in that. There's one teacher. And how many of you are uh, school leaders here? Or leading organizations or institutions? I think uh, Dr. Kaushal Yadav, you lead an organization, isn't it? Okay, anyway. Yes, I thought that you were talking about school only. That's okay. That's <laughs> yeah, okay. But I, I think uh, you have uh, uh, teacher educators under you yeah. and you have... Teacher ah, educators yeah. training them. Yes. So, yeah, so very well relevant uh, to this topic. I am sure that you can also contribute a lot to this session. So, I would like to uh, everyone to, you know, be uh, engaged actively in the session because I do have activities uh, at every, uh, you know, uh, frequent interval of the uh, session. Uh, I'll start sharing the screen first. Yeah. So, if here you see school improvement. Now, when you talk of school improvement, probably as teachers or prospective students and prospective teachers, you may be thinking what I have to do with school improvement. It's a very big, complex institution. And what am I really going to contribute towards school improvement? So through the session, probably you will find how important you are as an individual for working towards school improvement. So. Right in the beginning, we start with an activity where we will I'll give you a link here. And please click on the link and respond to it. A link, it's not. It is not for the It's got? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Sadaya, thanks for that. Yeah. So please click on this link. And take one, two sec one to two seconds to put down your responses. Yes. 
Is anyone speaking? Are you able to go to the link? Has anybody not been able to reach the link there? There's a problem with the link. Yeah. Because it's a photo of the link. Okay. No, it's not coming as a link. Okay, okay, I'll do that. I thought so. Yeah, now do you get the link? Please click on the link. Yeah, you can start putting your responses there. Okay, I can see some responses. Okay, that's fantastic. So just have a look at the responses that you have given here. So what are the key characteristics that you that you think that make effective schools. So yes, someone has talked about equality, quality, curriculum, yes, professional communication, teamwork, leadership, okay, that is considered of teacher and student needs, good teaching learning process, qualified teachers. Yeah, someone has actually come to the classrooms. Holistic development of child fearless environment. Yes, environment in the teaching learning processes, school infrastructure, teacher-student relationship, parent-teacher's relationship, uh, infrastructure, inclusiveness, curriculum, yes, absolutely. So that's what I was expecting from you. So these are the uh, actual indicators of school effectiveness and school improvement, yeah? So as we go further now, since you've already pointed as to what is school effectiveness, now I would like you to rate this particular uh, thing. Okay, now I put down a link here. Please go to this link. I would like to know how do you rate this? So statements like school leadership is crucial to school improvement. Teachers are the drivers for change in school improvement. Not all teachers participate in developing schools education practices. Teachers largely depend on their principals or leaders to provide the kind of stimulation for school improvement. Students are the strength, central focus of any school improvement framework. A comprehensive and holistic school evaluation is central to school improvement. A systematic and strategic set of school processes need to be followed for school improvement. So these are the few statements that have been given to you. Oh, great. Okay, so let's have a look at how many have responded. 
So just have a look at this. The maximum is 3.9. Teachers are drivers for change in school improvement. And a systematic and strategic set of school processes need to be followed. Absolutely. Excellent. It's followed by comprehensive and holistic school evaluation central. And students are the central focus of any school improvement. Let's see how important students are for school improvement framework. School leadership is crucial, yes. And still people are uh, voting probably. Not all teachers participate in developing schools educational practice is somewhat that research also speaks about. So this is what I want to get an idea as to what is your perception about school improvement and what are the factors that lead to or hinder school improvement. So now let's go to the actual uh, you know, concept of school improvement itself. So here we come back to school improvement. So as you see, it's a systematic and strategic set of school processes oriented towards educational changes to enhance learning outcomes. Now learning outcomes automatically says that student is at the center of school improvement and strengthens school's capacity for improved performance. So our target is the student. What is the purpose? Is to provide conscious trust and direction to the school. So who are those who provide the trust and direction? The, all these stakeholders. Provides opportunities to modify school practices and policies for the overall school environment. And when you're talking of policies, you may think what I have to do with policies, but within the school practices as a leader and the classroom practices as a teacher, you are definitely going to look at, draw from the policy and also inform the policy. And school improvement is a multifaceted, multi-layered, and multi-dimensional process. So it includes various aspects, various people, various stakeholders in the whole process of systematic and strategy processes. Further, if we go, so how do we work towards school improvement? Now, as teachers, and some of you are going to be teachers in another two years, one year, three years, whatever. And some are already in the leadership position who are in teacher education institutions who are, you know, having teacher ed uh, educators uh, under them who are training your students. So how are we actually going to work towards school improvement? I think teacher education also has a very strong role to play in this. So what are the various considerations that we need to take while working towards school improvement? And as teachers, if you are teachers, what are the key domains that you can influence to school improvement? Now we come to a Google Doc, where I would, I think it's a slideshow. Yeah, I would like you to go to that. Again, it came as a photo image. Yeah. Now, please cl click on this Google Doc. Google slide. Google slide. So here, if you see, at the center is a school improvement. And I want you to, there are text boxes here where I want you to put down the domains that you feel are aspects of school improvement. So as teachers, which aspect will you consider? What are the things you may you want to consider what is very crucial and important if you want suppose you're working in a school right i can see many of you on the uh, slide so you can start putting down quickly as teachers i don't think you need to think too much it's a Daily, yes, pedagogical aspect, absolutely. Yeah, I'll share. I thought first, let them start putting and then.
mutual trust okay teaching learning right resources absolutely concept clarity so yes content and pedagogic knowledge collaboration okay that's it school if you look at a school as an institution when students you have all all studied right in school observation school as the whole complex institution what are the various aspects that you look at within a school technological int integration absolutely inclusive classrooms yes okay so let's move forward maybe you can keep uh, jotting down there and we can come back to it later probably so i will show you a particular uh, diagram where all the aspects all the domains of school improvement is it visible visible yeah i have put it on the present mode Yeah. yeah. So if you see here, now this is the one what uh, Vinay was talking about in the beginning about the Shala Siddhi framework, right? That 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 is just one of the frameworks. There are many other frameworks like the CBSC SQA framework. That is school quality yeah, assessment. About those that. Any more? Speaking something? Okay. So there are many other frameworks. There is the Prime Minister uh, frame, PMI framework. There are so many other frameworks also. But this is the one which I've been working uh, since quite some time. So I thought, let me take this framework. So as you see, positions learner at the center stage, and school as a unit of evaluation. So if you're looking at improvement, how do you see that there is some kind of improvement? Unless and until there is assessment and evaluation, you cannot ascertain a. kind of improvement right and very uh, in beginning also i told you the learner is at the center and if you see in the circles concentric circles you see enabling resources someone had talked about resources so what is the availability what is the adequacy what is the usability of the resources in a particular school Te teaching learning and assessment somebody told about pedagogic framework right then learners progress so again student attainment and development then managing teacher professional development performance and professional development i think someone had also mentioned about professional development school leadership and management of course the principal and the leader is, is again a very important and crucial uh, component of the whole school improvement uh, framework inclusion again this also was mentioned in your google uh, slide inclusion health and safety and productive community participation someone had pointed towards um, collaboration right so collaboration means all the stakeholders parents teachers students the, the head the community the society everybody comes together that is where school improvement actually takes place so then if you look at the framework there is external evaluation then there are complementary evaluations then there are prioritizing action for improvement so it does not stand at here you identify some issues you worked for improvement and then again you go back for improving the same process after reviewing and reflecting it so this is the process that we are going to see now so now i would like to call upon any of one of the participants who has been a teacher in the school who has some kind of experience to narrate one at least one practice from a professional career where you felt that it led to the improvement of practices in your school is there anyone who would like to volunteer you can just raise your hands no one wants to volunteer any teacher here someone uh, someone mentioned teacher right who was that teacher uh, sadia right yeah good afternoon ma'am 
yeah sadhya if you if you'd like to uh, share some experience on uh, you know teaching profession yeah career. sure Very, uh, yeah please uh, my name is sadhya rafat working as a second grade teacher at mpps magdumpuram narsampet mandal barangal district telangana so presently we are uh, running excellent program foundation literacy and literacy. through this uh, program actually we are uh, working on languages and mathematics so how can we improve this is uh, in classroom so especially because i am working uh, as a english teacher primary english teacher so uh, to improve their uh, reading in language so we have uh, taken library books so especially for 20 to 25 minutes every day we are taking the library books uh, with the children and we are focusing on especially you know, sound alphabetical sounds to improve their uh, reading so how can we uh, pronounce uh, like uh, how can we pronounce uh, words and sentences phrases hello are you there yes sir. yes sadhya please go ahead yeah just uh, i want to share this and uh, another thing in mathematics uh, actually uh, we are doing with uh, so many uh, teaching learning materials uh, for example so if you want to uh, uh, teach addition we are taking like some beats uh, or uh, uh, with the concrete method and uh, for example if you want to show if you want to teach them a division what what kind of division so uh, we are in within the classroom in a circle time we are taking some uh, groups and taking some objects like pencils or chocolates uh, uh, to show how can we divide sharing what is the sharing uh, equally so this is the kind of uh, teaching learning uh, material we are using and we are uh, actually uh, they are improving a lot in their uh, uh, learning uh thanks sadhya for uh, sharing that experience and I, i would like to ask a few questions if you don't sure. mind yes ma'am sure uh so you said you are using these practices say in english uh, using the library resources or in mathematics yeah. right yes. so why did you feel the need for improvement what was the point where you felt that there is some need for improvement and you went for these activities yeah because uh, uh... i think that uh, uh, recently we started english medium schools because english is not their own language that is a foreign language that is a link language so uh, uh, we need to uh, practice on that and uh, secondly actually uh, so were you teaching these concepts earlier also now and uh, the main thing i think uh, uh, because as a teacher i'm thinking that uh, because uh, we had two years gap uh, uh, because of uh, covid situation so in that uh, situation all the students uh, were uh, away from classroom teaching classroom learning and they are, they are they were far away from uh, offline teaching because uh, uh, they were joining online but not like offline so there was uh, no any a uh, teacher to teach them on the time so after uh, corona uh, the results uh, were very poor so that's why i think uh, we are uh, going through with this uh, uh, best practices okay so you assessed the students and found that there is some kind of learning gap and that, that's the reason you have uh, uh, you know resorted to these activities so that they can improve on the concepts isn't it yes ma'am right yeah so basically there are certain steps that you follow to bring about improvement in your practice yeah so it is not very visible and explicit very mm-hmm. clear and you know very explicit but yeah. as we go further and as you look at the steps and probably you reflect back on your own practices and your experiences you will be able to identify which steps did you follow while bringing out these practices for improvement in your learner outcome right yeah. so yeah. At every teacher usually learns from experience yes yeah. so maybe a novice teacher maybe an experienced teacher even a leader for that matter in any school has some kind of practices that are going on in a school and at a point of time when you find that a certain practice is not working effectively and 
the school is affected somewhere there are some gaps yeah. is where you try to rectify or revise or you know go back to see what has you know uh, what is wrong what you need to do to improve and then you go back to revise your practices for improve improvement in a any particular area or any particular activity for you i'm sorry i'm just giving activities so that none of you go to sleep okay so now now i give you certain steps here i would like you to rank these steps in the order that you feel that you will go about when you are trying to improve certain practices here is the link please click on the link you have four options there can you see the options there i reflect i act i think i do so which do you th think comes first followed by which step and then which step i would like you to rank those steps okay so let's go back to see how many have okay i think analyze first i do experience i act implement and then i reflect okay now there is a switch hmm okay this is also possible but when you are going for improvement it's slightly different okay let's go back to the still people are polling on it so just remember this you have wrote it i think then i do then i act then i reflect this is the logical way of going about any particular action but now when i am already practicing certain actions what are the kind of steps that i will actually resort to let's have a look at it right have you heard of kolb's cycle of experiential learning how many of you have heard can you please raise your hands how many of you have heard about kolb's cycle of experiential learning anyone here yeah who is that one yeah kaushal yadav definitely i expect that from you <laughs> others have not heard about it okay so when you're talking of learning from experiences so this is the actual uh, usual theory that we always refer to the kolb's cycle of experiential learning so it starts as you see here this is the first one which starts with concrete experience okay where you do something and you experience it and when you do something and experience it that is suppose a teacher is teaching in the classroom a particular aspect a particular lesson she teaches and comes out and then she goes back to reflect on it so she observes what did i do how did i teach why did the students not respond in a certain way i expected right why did it go this way or whether it went well okay if this part went well why the other part did not go so i start reflecting after doing that i start conceptualizing it abstract conceptualization where i started thinking okay which were the factors that was responsible for the lesson not being effective or a particular part not being effective or for receiving that kind of response so i start you know looking at all those factors those issues those concerns it may be with respect to certain students it may differ from class to class it may differ from teacher to teacher right so i start thinking about it and then when i come to realize that okay this is where i need to rectify this is where i need to focus this is what went wrong i start again 
revising my whole way of teaching and then I go to active experimentation. Now, this active experimentation is equivalent to the concrete experience. So, it is nothing but re-experiencing. That is redoing the same thing, but actively after reflecting and after conceptualizing. So, if you look at it, see, concrete experiences having the actual experience. So, if you look at your responses, it was a little bit different. You did reflecting last. First, you did the thinking, right? Thinking, doing, then analyzing, then reflecting. That is what you had done. Here, as you see, for improvement, first having the actual experience, then reflecting on it, what happened, then thinking from the experience, what matters most, how can I rectify it, and then transforming. Now what? Re-experiencing and trying out what I have learned. So experiential learning, basically, when the whole theme of the School Synergy series is learning from mistakes, learning from experiences. It is all about experiential learning that we need to usually bring to classrooms. But even as teachers or school leaders, we use the same theory for school improvement also. So there are many different theories. You must have heard of John Dewey. So here, David Cobb, if you have not heard about it, they, have, they are all contributors for experiential learning. It involves a series of steps with hands-on, collaborative, and reflective learning experience. So there has to be a hands-on in the classroom or not only in the classroom, even if a teacher is trying to improve upon his or her pedagogical knowledge, there has to be some kind of hands-on. That is experiencing and then reflecting. Collaborative. Why collaborative? If I'm doing something a certain way, I will, if I want to reflect on it, if I want to abstractly conceptualize it, I need to collaborate with others to understand where I'm going now. I cannot do it solely by myself as an individual. I need to collaborate. I need to talk to others to understand where I'm going wrong. And then, of course, the reflective learning experience that helps us to fully learn new skills and knowledge. So a process that is applied multiple times in every interaction and experience. So this is completely a cyclic process where you experience, reflect, think, act. Now this act is nothing but re-experience. Again, reflect, think, act and come back to experience. So it's almost a cyclic process, continuous. It's a learning process initiated by a concrete experience, nothing abstract on paper, by thinking. You do it, experience it, feel it and then you reflect and act. So it demands reflection, review and perspective taking, abstract thinking and conceptualize the meaning of the experience leading to a decision to act, engaging in active experimentation. So the active experimentation, the last step is re-experiencing the whole thing after reflection and thinking and trying out what uh, Jack. The cycle is so natural and organic. So as Sabia, you pointed out, you couldn't actually bring out the steps right? You couldn't actually point out to the explicit steps because it is quite natural and organic. You don't consciously feel that you're actually abstract thinking or you're think reflecting or you're trying to, you know, redo it. Probably it comes very uh, naturally to us and it's very organic that people engage in it without being aware that they are learning. So we learn every day with every experience. Now, right in the beginning, I had asked you to jot down some key domains as critical performance areas for school improvement, right? Now, these are the domains. If you see resources, the, the, the one which you saw in the circle, teaching, learning, learner's progress, managing uh, teacher performance, school leadership and management, inclusion, product, uh, productive community participation. Today here, now we will focus on teaching, learning and assessment. Now, since most of you are here are teachers and prospective teachers, I would like you to engage with this particular domain of teaching, learning, and assessment. So I've chosen here four domains for you, teaching, learning, and assessment. Teachers' understanding of learners. Like you need to understand your learners. You all know that. Unless and until you know your learners, you're not going to be able to make your teaching effective. That is one. Planning for teaching, your lesson plan. Specifically, your lesson planning. Class management, how are you going to uh, manage your class in terms of infrastructure, in terms of seating, all those things. And learner's assessment. Assessment is one more very important and crucial formative assessment, summative assessments, different types of assessments, right? So these are the four things that I would like you to engage with now. 
So we have. Do we have an option for breakout rooms? Okay. So uh, I, I suggest that. Okay. So. Uh, what do I suggest is we here there are about 28, 27 participants. I would like you to go in uh, four breakout rooms. Yeah. And because there are four domains that we are chosen under teaching, learning and assessment. So if you can, you know, slightly work, I've given you a template. I'll be giving you a template where you can work on that. I'll just show you the template. First, I'll show you the template, then probably you can. Yeah. Is the template visible to you? Can you please confirm with a yes? No. Not visible? Uh, is it visible? No. Uh, okay. I'll do one thing. Then I'll share it directly from my... Now is it visible? Yes. Okay. Okay. So, can you see uh, what is written on the template for experiential learning? Now, we you take select any one of the aspects of teaching learning. So, what is the goal? So, if it is lesson planning, accordingly, what is the goal? If it's classroom management, what is your goal? Okay. So, set the context here. Activities, do it. What are you going to do? Actual experience. The doing experience. What is the nature of the experience? What are the skills that you used? Right? Whether the objective was achieved as you had you know, set in the beginning, whether it was not achieved. So what are the questions that you raise for yourself? Right? Then you go to reflect. What happened? Right? Share what happened. That is, you already have the experience here. Now, with the help of these questions, you will say what happened, what went wrong, what went good, why would it would have gone wrong and discuss issues. Maybe student had some issues. Maybe students' groups were not, you know, uh, mixed students' groups. Or it was two homogeneous groups, right? Again, questions here. So whatever question that comes to your mind with respect to these issues and other evidences, then as you go further, you think. Think about the process, right? What is important? What matters more? How can you rectify? You analyze it. Identify the issues and factors. What did you learn from it? And again, questions that may arise in your mind and then apply that is redoing it. So how you apply the learning. So now what? What your future experience looks like? What is this new experience, new learning skills and attitudes? So this is the template I'll be sharing with you. I'll be sharing the Google uh, link. And what you can do is on a Google Doc, maybe on the slide itself, the slide share which I shared with you, that itself you can share. Is that okay with you all? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Then I will share that. I'll share that. Share okay. click karke, link pe. Okay. Okay. So now you can uh, actually, uh, how are you going to do it? I'm thinking. Maybe I will put down the, uh, what do you say? I had shared with you a slide earlier, Google slide. So in that slide, I will just put down 
the specific aspects of teaching, learning, and assessment. Each slide. How many of you are there in the slide? Do you want me to share the uh, slide link again? Yeah, share the slide. I'll share. Yeah, you can go to this slide. I can see only two of you on the slides. Oh, okay, okay. Can I close the rooms and open it again? No, it's okay. It's there. Hmm? I can close the room. But room may jake, you have to, each one has to tell, no? Otherwise, I think you have to do that. Monadip is asking for help in the room. Can I? Yeah, can you hear all of you? Just give me a thumbs up if you can hear. Yes, from me. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, so what you can do is go to the uh, slide, the slide link which I have shared with you all. And there I put down the aspects, teachers' understanding of learners, planning for teaching, class management and learners' assessment. And I will also share the template with you. So you can select any kind of activity, any practice that you feel that falls under that domain. And fill in those questions.
ಹಚ್ಚಿಕೊಳ್ಬಿಟ್ಟ Okay, I'll share. I'll share the template here itself. Okay, so maybe you can start putting here. This is the template. There are people working on the slides. no one who is working on teachers understanding of learners planning for teaching i can only see learners assessment start by doing start school enter dalenge tab shoot karega na nahi automatic dikhega na can someone work on the other uh, dimension there is only one dimension being worked on that is the learners assessment i don't see the other three dimensions anyone working on ma'am as we received the very late that the link in breakout room could you please share again that so we can write what you want to uh, you want the planning, planning for teaching or the template you want you mean yeah yeah the uh, uh, template i can share by any any doubts i didn't get what you are trying to ask oh they are invisible how is it not visible i'll just try to share it hmm. now just check now no uh kaushal yadav is still in the break up please and you have closed the rooms then how there is no breakout room dr kaushal yadav no initially in the breakout room nothing was visible so we could not discuss also anything Oh, no issue now what you can do is you, you, we actually put put everybody in the main room yeah but now that uh, you know school improvement slide is getting displayed oh is it the thing is
Yeah, now I can see someone planning for teaching. Yeah, uh, someone has written in the learner's assessment about four formatives, two summatives uh, after every five working days. One assessment is there in monthly assessment. That's fine. That's about the uh, practice that regular practice that goes on in any school. But how are you going to look at it from an experiential learning theory? Like say if learners assessment, if you want to bring out some kind of improvement in the practice, any particular practice that you feel that could be done for the improvement of students' outcomes, for overall school improvement. When you talk of school improvement, it is always the students' learning outcomes and the students' overall development that we are targeting it, isn't it? And when we are talking about students' learning outcome, it is specifically when you're talking of learner's assessment. If you look at the template, just have a look at, let's, I'll sh uh, share the template here and let's see how we go about it. Say learner's assessment. Now, what is the kind of experience? What is the goals that you're going to establish? What is the objective of your particular assessment? So you took one particular topic and what is the objective of assessing that particular topic? Anybody can share that? how experience can go to reflect and think and how you can re-experience. Say if you have taken some kind of assessment in the classroom, how are you going to revise that particular assessment because it did not work in a certain way or it did not you know, fulfill the kind of objective that you had established. And finally, after reflecting and after thinking, how did you revise the practice and experience it in a different way? Can anybody uh, orally even tell? It's okay if you can tell orally also. Can anybody volunteer to do that? No one here. Students, we have been talking about assessment, right? In all the pedagogy classes, we have been talking about school as a whole, students' profile, school profile. So what do you think? How are you going to do an assessment and how are you going to revise that kind of assessment? On what basis? Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me? Yes. Who is that? Zora? Yeah, please, Ms. Zora. Yes, I'm Zora. I would like to share with you about um, lesson plan and also a formative assessment. Lesson plan is, uh, we, in, my, in my context, we have three kinds of uh, lesson plan, annual lesson plan, daily lesson plan, and weekly lesson plan. Uh, daily, plan, uh, daily lesson plans and annual lesson plan is very important uh, for a teacher, especially daily lesson plans that includes all, all activities that teacher wants to do in the classroom. But right now I would like to um, share more uh, about, uh, explain more about for assessment. And we have the three kinds of assessment, formative assessment, summative assessment, and end of the year assessment. And the formative assessment is uh, very important. We, a teacher can through different kinds of activities can done formative assessment in the classroom daily. For example, walking when the when the teachers uh, when the students learners uh, do activity, the teacher can walk around the classroom and um, note take note what the, what the students uh, take about take notes about the progress of the students through toward learning, and also uh, teachers can through observations through uh, central activities and also through uh, share peer uh, thinking uh, this kind of activities the teacher can then formative assessment uh, from their learners in the uh, classroom. And also um, some um, 
some other uh, activities uh, that uh, central activities through this uh, teachers uh, can then a formative assessment in the classroom and uh, this uh, i think this is very um, effective and very um, as a good result for our teachers and for the students for both of them and the teachers when they take uh, the, the take notes the progress of the students and after that the teachers think uh, for example uh, um, at, uh, uh, Zahra work very well, but uh, Mahmoud is um, a little need more progresses. I should work. Uh, she, she, I should work more uh, with them. I think this is um, kind of uh, uh, formative assessment a teacher uh, can do in the classroom daily. Yeah. So, uh, Ms. Zora, thank you for sharing that. But is there any kind of assessment where you felt that you need to bring in some changes because you are not satisfied and then you went back to, you know, revise your kind of assessment? Was there any such experience that you have encountered earlier in your teaching? No, I, in the context of Afghanistan, I'm from Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And in the context of Afghanistan, I think in, in my context, uh, uh, in the formative assessment, teachers uh, um, uh, take for students two marks. I think it should be to change because formative assessment just for, uh, it is not for judgment or for not to grade, we should to uh, give grade for uh, students. It is just to, for improvement of students, for better uh, uh, development of uh, learning, learning of, uh, Students, I should do. Uh, should we do remove uh, from our context? But I don't think of India. The teachers uh, and or no, I don't. Okay, thank thanks Zora for uh, sharing that. So probably you, your idea is that there should be more of formative assessment. Is that is that it? Is that what you are trying to say? Yes, yes, ma'am. Okay. So you have realized that students' learning can be improved through more of formative assessment rather than the yes, in terms. Of, yes. Okay. So so uh, yes. through the process, actually, you have, you must have undergone this right the the whole uh, steps of experiencing it and reflecting on it that because uh, there is less formative assessment mm -hmm. and there is only the you know in term uh, uh, summative assessment, so students are not actually learning. Right. So you must have reflected on these processes and then you have come to the yes. Yes. So so as you see that it's a very organic process, which you may not be able to see very explicitly and very minutely. But then these are the processes that we actually undergo and we should be consciously trying to uh, go through these experiences of reflecting and thinking whenever we feel that some kind of practice or some kind of experience is not satisfactory and not achieving the objective that you have set. Thank you, Zora. Thank you so much yes. for that. Yeah. Yes. So I want to say uh, something in, in the in the in this uh, reflection we have in our lesson plans uh, some things when uh, some students need more um, uh, more needs more assessment needs more um, help so the teacher have a uh, repeat uh, lesson plan for a small students who have uh, problems during the formative assessment when the teachers need when the teachers uh, understand and when the teachers uh, after formative assessment know that kind of students have problems so the teachers uh, take an action plan an action in action plans uh, in action plans the teacher uh, for with the new uh, methods, with the new with the new resource, uh, with the new uh, teach uh, teaching methods, that, uh, a teacher can teach this kind of students after the experience, after the formative assessment. I think this the depends on the uh, related to the reflections. Yeah, thank you, Zora. Thank you for that. In fact, you very nicely linked uh, the assessment to lesson planning. Right. So even yeah, as, right, yeah. absolutely. So how interconnected all these aspects are, that is also something very uh, 
important and very significant that we, we need to look at. So they, they are not independent aspects. They're all interconnected and quite interdependent. So when you look at assessment and even when you're trying to improve the assessment, automatically you go back and change your lesson plan. So these reflections and these kind of experiences help you to reflect on your lesson, overall lesson planning, maybe changing the content, the way you deliver the content, and then trying to again re-experience the whole uh, teaching with the help of that particular plan, revised plan. Right. Yeah. Thank you so much, Zora, for, uh, uh, you know, actually uh, exhibiting the kind of understanding that you have gone through in this whole process of experiential learning. Is there anyone who would like to uh, share any kind of example from their own experiences? Uh, I hope Zora was very clear uh, in exhibiting the whole you know cycle of uh, practice reflect thinking and re-experiencing and uh, it was it was good understanding basically and how she was linking lesson planning to uh, assessment so others if anybody sadia or someone else who wants to if you would want to share so if you don't want to share means either you have understood everything or you have understood nothing. Yes, ma'am. I'm totally agree with uh, Zohra. Uh, Ms. Zohra. And hello. Yeah, yes, Sadia. Ms. Sadia. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, if you have any experience to share in terms of, you know, the other three, uh, there were two aspects which class management was there. So even in class management, have yeah, class management is also a difficult task to a teacher. So why? Because uh, uh, there are uh, multilingual uh, children who are coming from different background, different community, and uh, who have different culture. And uh, mainly their mental IQ is uh, not like equal. So we have to deal with uh, each children uh, with a different uh, strategy. So have you tried out any strategy that you no. felt uh, yeah. worked? Well, yeah, uh, basically, uh, in, in a class, uh, we have uh, intellectuals are very few, average uh, uh, children are uh, more, and very poor who are uh, uh, very poor in their uh, learning skills, they are also uh, few. So, uh, here we are making some groups. So, uh, with that groups, uh, we are uh, with the one one intellectual uh, who are very uh, good actually in uh, teaching in uh, learning in their learnings so uh, with that we can uh, uh, cope up and uh, in reading activities also we are taking uh, uh, if uh, you are talking about uh, with the english uh, we are uh, in story time we are taking like a uh, silent reading in groups so in peer groups uh, they can learn more what are the hard words uh, or new words uh, actually they are reading so they can help uh, each other. And uh, in group reading, uh, also uh, they can imitate, imitate to their uh, friends uh, who are very good at uh, reading. So this kind of strategies we are using. Right, so uh, yeah, thanks Sadia for that. Actually you are talking about the mixed ability groups, right? Yeah. So if you're going to uh, teach a whole class, probably these kind of issues may emerge more and when you're having mixed groups and you're trying to uh, the you know collaborate students amongst each other, so peer tutoring or peer collaboration, where the above average may uh, you know be helpful to the students who are really in need of that kind of assistance. So scaffolding within the groups, right? So it also forms a kind of uh, community within the classroom itself, right? A learning community itself. Yeah. So these kind of strategies come up for improvement when you find that when you're teaching in the whole class and there are some issues that are emerging and students are not able to learn to a certain extent. So this is where these strategies and does, it just does, doesn't come like that. It, it actually goes through the kind of process that you have gone through. You may feel, you may have experienced it. You may have reflected on it and thought about why these issues are there. Why my student is not able to you know, achieve or uh, perform in a certain way and what should I be needing to do for that kind of improvement so these processes do come through 
every teacher, every individual basically uh, to bring about some kind of improvement. Sure, uh, Ms. Uh, Yadav, please. Thank you. Uh, I would like to share my experience regarding to the prospective teachers of my college. When in mathematics pedagogy class, we allotted them to prepare teaching learning materials. They just came up with simple charts initially. Then uh, I, reflected, I reflected that why this thing is happening. So then uh, when I asked them that why you are only bringing charts, then it was few students who uh, gave the response was that they have seen teach, uh, their school teachers using only charts in the mathematics class if they were using something other than the textbook. And so they were not exposed to any other type of teaching learning materials. So then we changed the strategy of the class, our teaching learning practice. We made them see various uh, videos. We made them see Arvind Gupta, Toys, App, then other uh, uh, short films are regarding to this. Then we practiced with them preparing other teaching learning materials. We conducted workshops. And then when we gave them that now you prepare on your own, they came up with fantastic teaching learning materials, which were related with their mathematics. And they prepared very good creative lesson plans also using those teaching learning materials. So this is the way the entire cycle worked with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Yadav, for sharing that excellent example. You actually used all those words, which actually is the cycle of experiential learning. So, you know, you thought you had conversations with the students. You tried to, you know, reflect on why this is happening. And then with the help of the students' response, you actually tried different strategies. And you again started, you know, go, went to the re-experiencing, right? The actual experimentation uh, part. So that was an excellent example of the whole cycle of Cole's experiential learning. And I'm sure each one of us here would be doing it unconsciously. But then uh, if we really uh, throw some kind of emphasis and throw some kind of conscious uh, efforts uh, in doing making our practice better for some kind of improvement uh, that would be a, a more you know a reflective practice basically we uh, keep talking of reflections and a reflective teacher and a reflective practitioner so as teachers if you are going to be good reflective practitioners uh, definitely we will be contributing a lot towards school improvement this is what i would like to uh, bring forth uh, with the help of my presentation today uh, and now, yes, I just, uh, I would like to ask you a question as teachers, as prospective teachers, are you ready to review, reflect on your practices in the context of your school and contribute to the improvement of your school? So you can just begin right now. If you have not been able to do till now, a conscious efforts towards school improvement. And uh, thank you so much for your uh, patient listening and just be here for two minutes. Vinay uh, would like to thank all of you, please. Uh, thank you, thank you very much, Dr. Uh, Gumpi. Actually, it was a very interesting session. Uh, starting from uh, P domains as a critical performance area for school improvement, we uh, focus on Four cycles of experiential learning, which is uh, uh, very much uh, important for changing uh, our thought regarding learning, concrete experience, with respect to observation, to assess constitutional reactive experiments. And then we uh, uh, think uh, about experiential learning definitions. We discuss on that, and uh, and many uh, very uh, important aspects teaching, learning, and assessment, we discuss on that. And uh, very actively, all the participants uh, are take part in this discussion. And it is very interesting that from teacher educators to teacher training, uh, those uh, reflect uh, uh, their uh, opinion regarding this uh, topic. And so it's very important and uh, interesting session. Now I'm inviting Dr. Ruchi to uh, conclude this session. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Dr. Gomes. Uh, thank you, Vinay. Uh... So we conclude this uh, school synergy session. I really want to thank uh, Dr. Gumpi Jatin uh, for taking this session for all of us and having such interactive discussion. Also Vinay for uh, coordinating and anchoring this session today. 
uh, I hope you all will join uh, the other uh, future sessions of School Synergy Workshop Series. And uh, uh, please do indicate your feedback or your request on the School Synergy Teachers Forum. I hope that all of you are part of it. Uh, that's all for today. See you again uh, next week. Bye-bye.